uh, it applies to mayors and former insurance commissioners and all sorts of folks. Certainly would have would apply to them all. Um, Mr. Chairman, do you want me to proceed with? Uh, if you could, please. Okay. Yes. Uh, you should have in front of you LC four one one four six seven ERS. Um, just before I go uh, through the bill, I do want to thank uh, the former chairman of this committee, Senator Harper, who worked with me in 2016 to come up with a lot of this language. Um, I have worked with uh, Chairman Albers uh, to make a few changes from uh, the bill as introduced, which the bill as introduced was the Senate Bill 6 that the Senate passed uh, 37 to 17 in 2016. Uh, so what does this bill do? If you look at uh, page 2, that's really where the new language begins, uh, we define uh, what an unlawful status EAD code is. Um, and that is simply a code that is provided uh, to folks that have been granted uh, deferred action on deportation uh, as part of the program that was created by the prior uh, presidential administration. Uh, what we proceed to do in section two is to establish separate from the driver's license that most of you would be familiar with, a separate driving safety card. That driving safety card uh, would uh, be provided to anyone, if you look down at lines uh, 58 and following, uh, anyone possessing an employment authorization document from the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services with an unlawful status EAD code. And then if you move on to page three, you'll see that uh, every driving safety card will in every way operate in like manner for types or classes of vehicles as a United States citizen driver's license. Um, that it will be subject to the same carrying exhibition reporting and motor vehicle insurance requirements and it will confer the same privileges and responsibilities for driving a motor vehicle upon a highway in this state and it will also be subject to the same laws and penalties in the law including but not limited to suspension or revocation. Now some of the differences as we continue down a driving safety card shall be valid only during the period of time of the applicant having a valid and current employment authorization document from the United States Citizenship and Immigration uh, Services with a code thereon that is not an unlawful status EAD code or five years, whichever comes first. And a driving safety card will be valid only for the privilege of operating a motor vehicle upon a highway in the state, shall not be valid for identification purposes, including but not limited to verifying the identity, residency, lawful status, or citizenship status of its holder. Um, we move on to uh, prior to the issuance of a driving safety card, the department shall obtain the fingerprints of the applicant. And the department shall distinguish a driving safety card from a driver's license issued by the department by the use of a unique design and color. And this is really where we have the distinction between uh, what was Senate Bill 6. Uh, the verbiage we're using is a little bit different. I believe in Senate Bill 6 we used uh, no lawful status or not lawful status. Uh, here we're using the term non-citizen. Uh, the other terms that you see there in, uh, in all capital letters at lines 94 and 96 are the same uh, as in the old Senate Bill 6. Uh, the driving safety card, other than those differences, will contain the same physical characteristics of and be similar in form to a driver's license issued by the department. Then you move on through. Um, there's some language here, 104 to 113, and there's, and there's going to be some more language as we move through the bill that references a special identification card. So for folks that have uh, a deferred action status that are not seeking a driver's license but want a photo ID issued by DDS, they would be entitled to the special identification card. You'll see over on page 6 from lines 183 to 205 uh, the language that describes what that special identification card is going to look like versus a regular ID card that's issued by the Department of Driver Services. Um, Section 4 uh, discusses the use of the SAVE program to confirm uh, the lawful presence of the person applying for the driving safety card. And Section 5 and 6 uh, are just cleaning up some code references. Section 7 makes it clear uh, that the act will become effective only upon appropriation of funds uh, for this purpose by the General Assembly. 
Um, so that's sort of the, the bill as it stands. I will say, for those of you who weren't here when we uh, debated this in 2016, uh, currently Georgia issues driver's licenses and identification cards to illegal aliens with deferred action status. Uh, the department has either issued or renewed over 50,000 such documents uh, as of this summer, which is the last time I made a request for numbers from the Department of Driver Services. So what we're trying to do here, um, we, we started off uh, moving a public policy that simply would have said, if you, don't, uh, if you have no lawful status to be in the country, you shouldn't have the privilege of driving, period. Um, we worked through a compromise process and got to a place where we said, okay, we're going to provide a mechanism uh, where even though you have no lawful status to be in the country, you've got deferred action, uh, so we're going to provide you with a document that allows you the privilege of driving, but that is clearly distinguishable from the driver's license that are issued to uh, citizens and that are frankly issued to those with lawful status to be in the state, like the business executive who is in the state for a period of time, uh, for example, at the Kia plant or the Mercedes-Benz facility. Um, someone on a uh, student visa, uh, someone on, ha who has some other lawful status to be in the country. Those folks will still be eligible for the driver, the limited term driver's license, which is only distinguishable from your driver's license by the words limited term printed at the top of the license. Um, you know, we feel like, or I feel like, uh, making this distinction is important uh, not only for public safety reasons, but also for the integrity of our elections process. Uh, obviously, driver's licenses are used for many other purposes other than driving. It is sort of the gold standard identity card in this country. Um, and so we think it's, uh, I think it's important to, uh, to make this distinction, um, and that's why I'm bringing this, uh, this bill to you today. Thank you, Senator. I appreciate your, your hard work uh, on this. Um, before we go forward on some questions, uh, in working with Legislative Council, we think there's a very minor change to be consistent that on line four, uh, when you get to employment authorization documents from the United States, we would actually strike Department of Homeland Security and replace that with citizenship and immigration services that, to be right. consistent. So if you're okay with that, before we even have a discussion on the bill, I'm just going to ask that we amend it to make it consistent. Is there someone who would be willing to offer that as an amendment? I've got a motion by Senator C, a second by Senator Dugan. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. <coughs> uh, first, again, uh, let me commend you uh, for uh, trying to come up with a great compromise here. Um, I had thought back. I've done a lot of work uh, overseas myself, actually. Uh, and in going overseas, it is not uncommon to get a temporary uh, driver card uh, in that area. Uh, in fact, most of them say non-citizen, uh, non-resident for that purpose, and it's temporary from the time of either your visa or whatever you have over there if you're a student, what have you. So I appreciate you putting that language in, Senator McCoon, and, and, and coming together with a good bill. Are there questions from the committee members before we have a few people sign up to speak? I got a question from Senator Williams. The, the process to get the, the, for lack of a better term, I know the driver's license, what were we calling it? The Driver safety card. Driver, driver safety card. They have to go through the same process, uh, test, exam, written. Yes, it, it doesn't change any of that, Senator. And, and if where is you, that in here? If if you look at, um, let's see. Um, starting at line 61, um, pursuant to the terms of this subsection upon payment of the required fee, the department shall issue to every applicant qualifying therefore a driving safety card indicating the type or general class of vehicle the applicant may drive. So what uh, qualifies them, paying the fee? What qualifies them would be taking the driving test and, okay. and the, the written test and the driving test. All right. Um, and then the bold on 94 through 96, driving safety card, not for identification, not acceptable for official purposes, non-citizen, and not for federal identification. Is all that put on the card? Yeah, correct. So, so if, if, you read, if you read it in its entirety, uh, starting at line 92, 92. Yeah. a driving safety card shall, in white letters displayed on a black banner positioned at the top or bottom or both of the driving safety card, include the terms driving safety card, not for identification, not acceptable for official purposes, non-citizen, and not for federal identification. And is that the only thing different with the card? Yes. So, I mean, it will be clearly 
distinguishable um, versus what we've had here recently, which is that limited term driver's license is being issued to people with both lawful status and, and no lawful status. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was asking, because um, I had the original, and I was just looking at the substitute now. So in the original where it talks about any person who is a current recipient of a grant or deferred action, but in this one here, you actually talk about the Employment Authorization Code and then list some codes. Right. Are, they the, are you saying that that is the exact same thing? What we're, well, that's correct, Senator. So, so what we wanted to do to be more precise, because mm -hmm. there is some debate going on and, and frankly some fluidity in what deferred action may mean uh, going forward uh, every uh, ever my understanding is every deferred action recipient is issued by the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services uh, in addition to a, a we refer to it as a work permit but what we're really talking about is an employment authorization document and I learned uh, relatively recently that there are specific codes that, that carve out those who are without lawful status to be in the country. And so rather than just talk about deferred action generally, which I think is not as precise, uh, we went with, we included the definition of what an unlawful status EAD code is. So that's the reason for that change. If I can have one follow up. Sure. Uh, because there's, there's, there's a lot of different codes under them, and I don't know them all. Why single out these codes? And I'm just, I really don't, I don't know. What, the, there's like 20 different right, codes. Right. These are the codes that indicate no lawful status to be in the country. There are employment authorization documents that are issued to people who have a lawful status. For example, someone who enters into uh, the labor force through the H-1B visa program would receive an employment authorization document, but it would indicate they have lawful status because they've been granted permission to enter the country for the purposes of work. Uh, the same thing for the example I gave earlier of the, the, the management uh, executive type person at the Kia plant in my district or at the Mercedes uh, headquarters facility uh, who, who have legal authority to be in the country for a specified period of time, um, th those are separate codes. So these, these are the codes that are broken out that deal with those who have no lawful status to be in the country. Okay. I'm good for right now. Okay, any other questions? Uh, I've got a question from Senator Richardson. Uh, Senator, um, could someone get a, a, a driver's license this way with every class that we have as a driver's license? Uh, that's like I'm getting, I go on to what I'm getting at. Yeah, that, like that's CDL correct, CDL license? Yes, Senator. If you look uh, at a motorcycle uh, license or... Yes, sir. If you look at line 66 and 67, you'll see that it says under subparagraph A that the driving safety card shall in every way operate in like manner for types or classes of vehicles as a United States citizen's driver's license. So to Senator um, Williams' point, obviously you'd still, if you wanted to have a CDL citizen, uh, CDL driving safety card, uh, you would have to pass the appropriate tests and otherwise qualify, but this would not prohibit you from doing that. And one more question. How long would these, this card be for? A so, year, two years, three years? So it's going to track with the period of time that their employment authorization document is valid. So if you look at line 76 through 77, it says a driving safety card shall be valid only during the period of time of the applicants having a valid and current employment authorization document from the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services with a code thereon that is not an unlawful status EAD code or five years, five. whichever occurs first. Yeah. So um, if, if their authorization goes beyond five years, it's just going to be five years. If it's less than five years, it's going to be whatever that time frame is. Just uh, about the fingerprint section, um, you say in line 87, the department shall obtain fingerprints. Are you referring to the Department of Driver Services? Yes, I am. And that's something they have the capacity to do currently? Yes.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, Senators. My name is Raymond Partolan. I'm 24 years old, and I live right here in Atlanta, Georgia, and I come to you as a private citizen. Uh, uh, if you, some of you may recall that I testified before this same committee two years ago uh, in opposition to essentially the same bill uh, with the same bill sponsor. So I come before you today as one of the 24,000 or so DACA recipients across our state that would be directly impacted by the passage of this legislation. Two years ago, I characterized this bill as unnecessary, mean-spirited, and borderline inhumane. A senator on this committee even said that me being here was a publicity stunt. My characterization of it today has not changed, and let me tell you why. I've lived in this state practically my entire life. I moved to Macon, Georgia at the age of one from the Philippines. My parents brought me here on a legal H-1B visa. But unfortunately, when I was around 10 years old, a number of unfortunate circumstances led to the denial of our applications for permanent residency. And that was when I became undocumented. From that point forward, I started living in the shadows. My parents told me never to tell anyone about my immigration status, because if I told the wrong person, that person could, uh, put, could put our entire family in jeopardy of being removed from the United States, the only home myself and my two younger brothers have ever known. In high school, the fear and anxiety of living as an undocumented person in our state uh, was almost too much to handle. I couldn't drive, I couldn't work, and I thought I wasn't gonna be able to go to college no matter how hard I work. I promise I'll, I'll wrap it up. Um, it wasn't until DACA was implemented in 2012 when things finally started to, uh, to look up. And that was when I applied for protection from the federal government and it was granted to me a couple of months later. I was finally able to get a driver's license. As Mr. McCoon said, it already has the words limited term on top. My driver's license is already different from my US citizen counterparts driver's licenses. But now this bill, as you've heard, seeks to take this away from me and replace it with a driver's safety card with the words no lawful status on it. This invites discrimination against me and others in my position and there is no reasonable basis for the inclusion of such language on my license. And if you have any doubts about the spirit of this legislation, an early version of this bill would have had the words illegal alien on it instead of no lawful status. My entire life, all I've wanted to do is belong here in the state of Georgia, the only place I've ever known. Don't do this to the 24,000 DACA recipients in our state who only wish to make this place better. Please do the right thing. Vote no on SB 417. And I'll happily take questions if you have any. Thank you, Raymond. No questions. Okay, next. And again, folks, we're going to need to keep the time uh, less than two minutes. Thank I'll you. I'll keep it short. Honorable Chairman, members of the committee, thank you for having us here today. Um, I am here to urge you guys to oppose um, this bill, and I'm sitting here before you as a DACA recipient. I am personally affected by this bill. I just want to point out some things um, that were said by Senator McCoon and things within the bill. I have the original in front of me. The substitute um, is not out, and we're not um, able to get that yet. But um, Senator McCoon said that Georgia currently issues driver licenses to illegal aliens. I can assure you that I am not an illegal alien. I have been in this country since I was five years old. I went to school in Georgia. I graduated from undergrad in Savannah, Georgia, Armstrong State University. I currently reside and work in the greater Atlanta area. Um, and I do not consider myself an illegal alien and neither does the, um, the government. They don't refer to me as an illegal alien. They refer to me as um, someone with Deferred Action for Childhood Arrival status, which is DACA. Um, with DACA, we are already asked to take fingerprints every two years. So the fact that this bill is requiring us to take fingerprints again is unnecessary and a waste of taxpayer money. Um, <laughs> uh, again, um, the, the DMV would just lose, I mean, lose resources because this is unnecessary and the bill is just a waste, a waste of our time. And um, if you have any questions for me, I'll take them. Thank you so much, there are no questions. And last but not least, Aisha. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I will keep my remarks brief as well because they covered most of my points. Um, I just wanted to clarify that within the bounds of at least the version that I've seen, it sounds like um, 
friends like these that are on DACA that are DACA recipients would have to obtain two forms of identification um, in order for them to drive and then also get identification as the identification as the purpose of the identification card. Um, my argument is simply that that's just really confusing for people. Um, you know, folks that don't have uh, a driver's license or folks that can't drive, they will need to get the special identification card. But in the case of individuals that do drive, they would have to carry around two forms of ID. And showing the identification, showing the driver's safety card for a form of identification would be considered a misdemeanor, which I think is um, criminalizing them enough. Um, my argument is simply it is unnecessary because it requires to people to carry two forms of ID. Um, if they don't have the special identification card, they won't be able to get access to movie theaters. Um, they won't be able to travel or do any of the, the day-to-day -day activities that we usually do. So um, th obviously we oppose this bill and um, just wanted to also follow up on what they were saying and say that I agree with their comments. Thank you for your comments. Okay, any further uh, discussion? If not, I will uh, entertain the will of the committee. Please, uh, Senator McCoon, would you come back up? That's not the way, I'm sorry, Senator. That's not the way I interpreted the language within your bill was the two IDs. I thought it was one if you wanted to drive and the other one if you did not want to necessarily drive but you wanted a form of ID. That is correct, Senator. Okay, that's what I was making sure I would, didn't Thank misunderstand. You. Okay, uh, will of the committee. I've got a motion to pass from Senator Williams. Is there a second? Williams. I've got a second from Senator Lee Anderson. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. One, two, three, four. Uh, all those opposed, please like sign. I think I counted you twice. Let's do this again. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. You're on the right. No, really. <laughs> All right, we have four. All those opposed? Okay, the motion uh, motion fails. Um, we, uh, oh. okay. Thank you all, we appreciate it, but uh, we're gonna keep the testimony just to those in front of the microphone. Uh, Thank you all for that. We're going to go to the next bill on the calendar. That is uh, Senate Bill 446. Senator Harper, if you could just do it from there. And we are seven minutes away from uh, losing this room, so we're going to yeah. talk briefly. I will be very, very brief, Mr. Chairman. and. Uh